Welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Worldwide Willis. And this podcast, as usual, is brought to you by the LMG Podcast Network. You know what time it is. It's a review time, so you know what time that means. You know who my guest is going to be. We got my main man, L. Laveris, in the building. What up, man? Man, glad to be back, man. Yeah. Of course, had to have you back uh, to dissect all the wrestling news and all this, all, a lot of wrestling stuff going on right now. So um, today we will kind of talk about fast lane a little bit, kind of what we think is going to happen as far as like match matches. We'll talk about a little bit about Wrestle Dream, AEW. Um, and then we will review No Mercy, NXT No Mercy. And then we will give our top five NXT, our top five favorite NXT matches, uh, which is going to be a hard, a very hard list to put together, but we'll do our best. Um, Yeah, that that was, it was tough. It was tough. All right. uh, Matches of the week. We'll kind of loop those into our review um, just because that will, that's where most of our top matches will come from, obviously. So, um, L, with the build of Fastlane, how do you feel like it's been going so far? And, like, I know we got the John Cena LA Knight versus the Bloodline. We got a few others. I think it's Shinsuke and Seth rematch. Uh, anything sticking out to you that, or anything you want to see specifically on the Fastlane card? Definitely want to see John Cena, LA Knight, and the Bloodline because of LA Knight, of course. Right. Um, I kind of want to see um, EO, Oscar, and Charlotte. Yeah, I agree. That, that should I be want, a solid one. I want to see that chemistry because you know Charlotte and Oscar got some weird stuff going on when it comes to them two by themselves. Right. So I want to see what what it looks like with EO in there. Yeah, that should be a fun one. Um Hopefully, like, EO and Oscar can kind of lead her through. Like, you know, they've won against each other a million times, Oscar and EO. So, yeah, uh, kind of fill her in. I did see uh, – I'm definitely excited for that one. I'm definitely excited for, like you said, LA Knight, Cena. I'm excited for Shinsuke Seth again just because if we get the same level of Shinsuke that we've been getting lately, I'm excited for that. Um, but if he gives us, you know – their last couple years, Shinsuke, I'm like, nah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I don't want I don't want to see that Shinsuke. Exactly. Like the week I need him like really throwing blows. Um, some of the predictions I'm seeing, like I've been looking at reading some articles, and they were predicting that uh maybe Cody Rose versus Drew McIntyre, which would be very interesting. That's 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 new, right? Like yeah, I don't think they wrestled that's, before. Yeah, like not in WWE for sure. I, I think they have on the independence, but like that was a while ago. Um, and I, I'm interested only because I don't think Drew is like 100% turned yet. So it would be interesting to me to see if he turns around, you know, before Fastlane, you know. Yeah. Um, but he, they, they let him slowly cook, which I like. Um, do you think Rhea Ripley, Nia Jax makes it on the card? Um, I think so. Yeah, but that sucker is kind of rushed a little bit. Yeah, it is. This is extremely rushed. Um, I, I can and see I just only because of Rhea. Oh yeah, not yeah. at all, not at all. Um, I, that's the only reason I think they put it on there is just because Rhea and they want gotta have some Judgment Day, you know, representation on there. Right, but. Yeah, I'm not excited about that one at all. Um, I didn't get to see Nia Jax promo on the latest episode of Raw, but I heard it wasn't great. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I did see someone predict maybe a Gunther Tommaso um, IC title match. Ooh, I would like to see that. Yeah, me too. Now, I feel like they always shy away from putting Gunther on, like, not big PLEs. You know what I mean? Like, they put him on SummerSlam, but then hold him off from payback. You know what I mean? Like, they put him on for, you know, WrestleMania, but then they won't, 
you know, he never he doesn't defend his title on non big time PLEs. And I never understood that. It would be cool to see him go. It would be cool to see just Champ get a shot. Uh, obviously, he's gonna lose, but I mean, just to see them put on a banger would be dope. Yeah, I can see. I, I would like to see that. Yeah, but where where the heck is Johnny? Bro, this dude, man, I be seeing he be taking pictures with his family and stuff. He's like, bro, get in the ring. Are you are you hurt? Like, they're saying that know. he's not. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm like. I don't know. I don't, he hasn't been wrestling a ton, so it's like, I don't think he's hurt. Like, I thought they was going to tease DIY. They was doing it like a month ago. Yeah, they were. And, I mean, I bet you they still will do it. They just, maybe something was a setback to the timeline or something. I'm not sure. But, yeah, I need that to happen ASAP. And But I, I, I don't want... I don't know. I don't want Tommaso to take an L, but if you're taking an L to Gunther, it's not that bad, right? It's not going to hurt you that much. You know what as I mean? As long as he doesn't lose in a way where it's, like, devastating. Yeah, as long as he doesn't get squashed out there. Yeah. Fine, you know. But, yeah. Um. Okay. I, I mean, I, I'm excited for fast learning. I saw some people were like, Man, they're not using John Cena to his full capabilities. I'm like, bro, he like he out there doing having fun doing his thing. Like, what do you want? What like, you want what they want him to be fighting Roman right now? That's like, what I'm saying. That's what I'm like. We've seen that a million times. Yeah, we don't. That's, that's not, not part fun. of the, yeah. yeah, that's not but, part of the story. And he's actually what I like is it isn't bring him back and go get some random like Austin Theory or bring him back to do some like very irrelevant stuff. They have him in the thick of it. Like he's going up against the bloodline and he's teamed up with the hottest dude in wrestling right now. Like it makes sense. You know what I mean? Um like, like LA Knight's getting that rub right now. Exactly. It's a perfect spot for both of them. Like Cena's out there having a good time, doing his thing. That's the only reason he's here. He just wants to have some fun. You know what I mean? And so he's like but I get to also rub on the next person, like hell yeah, you know. Right. Um. Yeah. People were just like, uh, yeah. I think people were like, oh, Cena's back, so he's gonna win the title. He's gonna be Seth, and then the next night he's gonna be Roman, and then it's just like, what are y'all thinking? Like, I swear, right. people don't think. All right. People trip right now. Yeah, bro. I swear, these people do not be thinking. They just fantasy book and don't actually think like logistics. You know. And they so, get mad if then they'll get mad if it actually did happen. Exactly. Bro, I saw somebody, they was like, oh, after this, uh, LA Knight should challenge Roman. I'm like, bro, like, you got to stop. Like, you've done this. You did it with uh, Drew. Then you did it with Sammy. Then you did it with Jay. Then you did it, you know what I mean? Cody. Like, we got to stop. Like, slow the train down. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't need to jump straight to, if he went, like, he's not, LA Knight ain't ready for that. I love LA, but he ain't ready for the big belt yet. You know? He needs to go through some, you know, hold another belt for a little for a little bit. You know what I mean? But he would get. I mean, I love I love him, but he would get ate up by Roman. And then in a Mike battle right now, he get ate up. It'll be yeah, Roman out there killing people. Yeah, Roman would like look at him and be like, "Who who are you?" <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar with you. Who who are you? Like. Yeah, he was trying to sun him real quick. Um, so, but no, nah, that's that's I, I am excited for Fastlane. Should be a good card. Um, you know, trip under Triple H, all the like pay per views that you're like, ah, you know, they don't really catch your eye. They always end up killing. You know what I mean? Payback was really fun. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm excited for that one. Um, now for WWE. I mean, I'm sorry, for AEW, we have Wrestle Dream, which is actually occurring. We're recording this on a Sunday. It's going to occur later this evening. Um, it's a lot of matches. And me and Elle were talking about it. It's a lot of matches on this card. Which, how many did you say it was? Uh, I want to be say, like, maybe, like, eight during the pay-per-view. Then they yeah. got, like, maybe one or two in zero hour. Maybe. Yeah, a little pre-show. Yeah. It's a lot of matches. That is a lot of matches to watch in one sitting. Um now, I will say this match has a lot of – it has some very, very interesting matches on it. Um, L, is there any matches on here that you're, like, interested in watching? 
Uh, definitely a uh, swerve versus Hangman. Yeah, I definitely want to see that. You know, for the culture, of course. Yeah. you know their build has been pretty good too. It it has, and I'm glad they given Swerve some shine. Yeah, on that one for sure, especially against Hangman, who's we all know is proven. Right. So that's definitely one that I have my eye on for sure. What about you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, my number one is everybody knows I'm a Zack Sabre Jr. Stan. This is a Stan podcast for Zack Sabre Jr. and Gunther. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so him versus uh, Brian Danielson, like that's going to be wrestling. Like that's a Bible. That's like a t- they should like film that and teach it to all young up and coming wrestlers and just send that out to all of them. Because that, that thing's going to be a, a master class. Um, I am interested in FTR versus Ozzy Open. I've always really liked Ozzy Open. Every time they show up on AW or New Japan or wherever, uh, they kind of mirror each other, FTR and Ozzy Open, as far as style. So that'll be fun. Um, the other match that kind of caught my eye, as you said, Swerve and, um, and Adam Page. And then... The last one is kind of interesting to me. I guess it's like a a winner gets an AEW title shot, tag team title shot at any time match. I I don't know what the stipulation there is, but basically Young Bucks versus the Guns versus Orange Cassidy and Hook versus the Lucha Bros, the four-way tag match. Like, that's that sounds like a banger. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if you guys have heard in our latest episodes I did with Pat. He's a big time Orange Cassidy hater, which I do not understand. <laughs> uh, oh man, that hate was so real too, bro. It doesn't make any sense <laughs> at all. Like the hate was purely like it, it sounded like he was talking. He was talking like in the like 2018 Reddit. You know what I mean? It was just like all the stuff that Orange Cassidy has already proven wrong. He's like, he can't, all he is is a character. He can't wrestle. And it's just like, okay, he's put on classics already. And he held a belt. He made a belt that was irrelevant, relevant. But all right. Um, but yeah, that one should be fun. I'm really, like, obviously Young Bucks, anybody in the tag match is great. Lucha Bros are amazing. Um, and then the Guns represent the Bullet Club. Bullet Club Gold. Should be a fun one, you know? Oh, another one. Mm-hmm. That- People probably have their eye on possibly. Yeah. That Kristen Cage and uh Darby Allen. Oh yeah. Isn't because a- somebody somebody's a free agent out there and they think that he's gonna pop up during that match. Oh possibly. I think you're you know, I did not think about that. That's a good 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 call. Cause for those who don't know, the the event is in Seattle, Washington, I believe. That is where Swerve Strickland's from Seattle, but mainly in this case, Darby Allen is from Seattle. Apparently, that Christian Cage Darby Allen match is going to be the main event. Now, some would say, "Oh, okay, Darby Allen is the guy. Okay, that's why it's the main event." But what, like you mentioned, our boy Adam Copeland Edge is a free agent at this time. Like, if you're gonna have him pop out, you know, you if you know he's coming, you put that as the main event. That's going to be the biggest moment of the night, biggest pop of the uh-huh. night. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be dope, bro. Um, like if think if he came out there, to, I wonder if he would help Darby, and then you do a Christian Cage versus Cole. I mean, a Christian Cage versus Edge match, or if you, I don't know how you do it. Either way, it's going to be it's going to cook. But I would like to see them go against each other. I, I think that'd be dope, just because I think. The way Christian been rocking, bro, he'll say anything about anybody, and 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 they know each other. Know exactly, each other. they got history. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got history, history. He you know don't mess saying? around, come out something that we don't know about. We be like, ooh, I don't think he <laughs> yeah, said that. Exactly. <laughs> like, he gonna talk about his wife. He gonna probably bring up Lita. He gonna bring up everything, bro. And yeah, no, nah, that, that actually got me more excited about. That card and or that event and as a whole. Um, so no, nah, that should be that should be fun. Uh, I'm definitely gonna be checking um checking the Twitter tonight to see if you know what I mean if he shows up or not. But yeah, I'm definitely checking that one for sure too, just for that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Now let's hop into our review of NXT No Mercy. 
great event last night. Um, great card overall. And yeah, so our first one, which was a surprising to me, our first match was Braun Breaker versus um, Baron Corbin. I did not expect this one to start out first. Uh, like I, I don't know why I didn't think this would be the, the start match. Yeah, that, that did throw me off that it was yeah. the first first one. I'm like, oh, okay. But, I thought it was gonna be that uh that butch match. Yeah, I can see that. I thought they do I thought they do trick versus dirty dom just because it was like get the crowd started, like immediately, boom, crowd favorite versus most hated person. Like I thought they was just like hit you and usually they hit you in the mouth like first match, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or or the tag team match, one of the two. I thought it would kind of get the crowd going a little bit. But, I mean, to Baron Corbin and Brown Breaker's credit, like, they, they had some really cool spots. You know what I mean? They got the crowd involved. Um, That that chair, I mean, that, that table, when he, when Baron Corbin landed on that table, it didn't break. It was stiff as hell. Yeah, I was like, ooh, that looked like that hurt a little bit. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was going to break, and it didn't. No, I was like, sure. okay. I'm like, yeah. Baron like, Corbin's not a little good. guy. Yeah, he's not little whatsoever. So that really threw me off when that didn't break. Yeah. No, that was that was fun though. I mean, I feel like this is kind of a transitional, kind of a transition type of match for for Brown Breaker. He's not in the title picture. Kind of had to give him an opponent. Um, I was surprised by the result though. Didn't Finish think he was going to lose that. Yeah. Did not think he was going in the way he in the way he lost the way he lost, that, yeah, he um, lost like it was a TV taping. He <laughs> said he really did, he really did <laughs> clean. I mean, it wasn't clean, but it was like, you know, what I mean, he didn't hit him twice with the end of days. He hit him one time, you know, he hit him one time. He turned around and it was like, boom, here we go, yeah, one, two, three. Exactly. I thought um, Wagner, um, is it, what's homie's name? Wagner. Uh, the dude that be tabling people. He was like, you're going to get tabled. Um, I forgot my dude's name. Oh, I know, I know his name's Wagner, though. though. Um, yeah. His representative kind of jumped in. For those oh, who don't know. Robert Stone? Yeah, Robert Stone, exactly. Robert Stone got involved basically trying to uh, get payback for what Brown Breaker did to Wagner like a couple, few weeks ago. Hit him with the steel steps over the head. Um like down on his head. It was it was crazy. Um but no, nah, that was cool. Like I was thinking Wagner was gonna show up, but it was cool. It was a cool way. Cool way to like continue that storyline or whatever. I need the WWE to hire some better security guard. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's no way if you did if you if you go look back at this match, those two security guys who got punched out at yeah. the beginning of the match were on the floor the whole time until the very end. Yeah, that's true. I was like, how you be a security guard? You got hit once in the top of your forehead and you were <laughs> gone. You're right, yeah. For about nah, 15 was... minutes. Because yeah. they went back there and they were still on the ground. I'm like, <laughs> come, come on now, bitch. Right. I gotta, we got to do better than that. You could at least got up and like move <laughs> over to the, yeah. to the side, hold your head, move to the side. That's they were funny. still on the ground. I was just like, are they still? They are on the ground. I'm like, that was like 10, 15 minutes ago. Right. Like, get up. <laughs> they act like they got speared or something. But no, Yeah, they... I was like, you got punched in the top of your head. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> That's a good way to point that out. Because I, yeah, man, like, security guard jumped out there. Um, Stone comes out there. I guess he is thrown back to the security guards. And then Brown Breaker turns around and then uh, Baron Corbin hits him with the end of days. Um, definitely was a surprising finish. I, I was also surprised, like, the crowd, like, was was chanting for Baron Corbin a little bit. Like, they was chanting his name and stuff. I thought the same thing. I was like, are they booing Brown Breaker right now? Right, yeah. I thought that, too. I was like, I kind of get it. Like, Brown Breaker is the heel, but it's like Baron Corbin is not the baby face. You know what He's I'm saying? He's not the baby face at all. He just don't like him. Exactly. They just two heels don't like each other, and the crowd was rocking with Baron Corbin. I was surprised. That's what, that was. I thought they was barking because it's yeah, gimmick. Right. But I was like, wait a minute, those are not barks; those are boos. So I'm yeah. like, 
How did we get here? Right. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe people are really still upset about the Wagner thing with the steel steps. I don't know. But um, I saw, oh, I saw Baron Corbin tweeted out, uh, thanks, Baker Phil. Y'all were on fire all night. And uh, they were a great ca- crowd. But yeah, I was just surprised with know. the whole Baron Corbin cheering thing. And you, you just don't see it. You just don't see nah. it. Um, now, the second match, you know, keep me straight here. I believe it was the, is this now the Trick Williams? Dirty yeah, Dom? this was tri- Trick and Dom. Yeah, Trick Williams versus Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Man. Bro, this one had a lot of hype behind it, rightfully so. Man, you know when Trick hit that, when that music hit, bro, best entrance in the game right now. Man, when I saw when I first saw the crowd doing whoop that Trick, I was like, okay, yeah, we here now, all right, yeah, like, bro, like whoop that like, okay. Trick, bro. That then you got uh, Booker T, bro, like a hype man, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Sometimes I don't like Booker T on right. commentary, but right. when he does that, I'm yeah. okay with it. You're saying he's uh huh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that was it. Was it adds another element because that's what we all doing anyways. So that's true. It, it was dope, man. It was and like because you know in the in the smaller like Orlando facility, the um, performance center, like the crowd is usually recycled like it's usually the same people so they're doing it and it's like oh okay that's dope but i'm like i wonder if that translates to a bigger crowd they went all the way to bakersfield california and they and the whole building was doing whoop that trick i was like yes i was like yeah we're good yeah because i thought the same thing i was like okay is this gonna show up with all right. these thousands of people okay right. it does okay it we're is. good. exactly it does it, and just to hear it at a like stadium level that was fire that was fire. Like, who, like, I need to figure out because starting this match all the way to the very end, somebody black must be a producer. <laughs> because every match from here on out, which I'm going to point out these little things, right? have something with culture of us in it. Gotcha. And I'm like, okay, who is making these decisions? Because I need to know, because whoever that is, I love them for it. Right. Because there's so much black stuff that's in this pay-per-view. It's crazy. Yeah. That people probably don't even notice. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, especially just this one is just trick. Yeah. No. <laughs> Facts. Like, yeah, you know, the whole thing, man, it was just like, like, and it's funny because it's like, I know there's people like, what does whoop that trick mean? And where the hell did it come from? And it's like... <laughs> All right, man. You just you're not tapped in in the culture, but that's fine. Like, just join in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, just just go ahead and just join us. You'll yeah, you'll, you'll know soon enough. Yeah, like you don't you don't need to know the whole backstory. Just have a good time. Um, it was a good match. Um, I think Dom, man, he's improving so much in the ring. It's crazy. Like, dude is just so smooth now. Where before it was kind of like, okay, he was kind of robotic. It was more like, okay, I learned these four moves when I was a kid working with my dad and these are the four moves I can do, but I really can't do anything else. But now it's like, ah, uh, he, he bringing out all kind of different stuff from his bag, like, and working with different people. Cause one thing I was worried about in this match, I was like, all right, who's going to lead the match? Cause, cause I love trick, but trick green as fuck, like green as hell. You know what I mean? And so Boy. I was like, okay, is Dom going to like lead trick through this thing? And it's, it looked like he did, but I wasn't quite sure. couldn't quite tell, but, um, because you can Overall. tell that a lot of things that happen, like Trick should have known. Yeah, exactly. like a couple of those referee spots. Yeah, like you knew there was no referee there. Why'd you act surprised? Yeah, yeah. Why'd you let up on the on the pin? You know what I'm saying? Like and, and go and go right back. Exactly, and then go right back to it, and then like, yeah, Trick is just green, man. Like. One of the greenest things he did, and this is just me being an old head in wrestling. You win the title and you jump up there and celebrate without the title. I was like, Trick, grab the belt first. Then you jump yeah. up there. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you don't <laughs> do a full two minutes of celebration. The ref is standing there with the belt. 
you're celebrating. It's like, nigga, for picture sake, sake for for video, for B roll for later. Grab the damn belt first, then you go up there and do that. Like and Dragon Lee just sitting there waiting. Yeah, exactly. Like just just holding the belt for him. Like nigga, just from a producer mindset, I was just like, I know Shawn Michaels is just like, nigga, if you don't get your ass down there and grab that damn belt, <laughs> like. You gotta like, let them turn, know. Turn around. Turn yeah. around. Right yeah, like you gotta know why you're so happy. You know what I'm saying? Like you wilding, and people are just like, "Oh yeah, you, you won." And then he's like, "No, nigga, I won a title for the first time." You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it, that just bothered the hell out of me. It shouldn't have, but I was just like, "Trick!" And the whole time I was like, "Trick, grab the belt. Trick, grab the belt. Trick, grab the belt, son." Like, like, <laughs> like no, the- <laughs> turn around. Dragon yeah. just sitting there looking at you like, come get this belt. Right. Come like, get this belt. Right. Just like, bro, you got to, yeah, especially baby face, yeah, you got to go grab that belt, man. Because um, then you got to have the crowd to react twice like that. Exactly. And the second one, they ain't going to react as loud as the first time, right? The yeah. first time they're reacting because you won. It's the end of a match. They're all excited. So you got to give them that extra here's a belt, but now you got to do the the whole belt hold up my arm I thing again. It's just like all right, um, but no, nah, it was a good match. Um, it was a cool finish. I like that he's changed his finisher to the high knee thing, the running knee. I like that a lot better than the trick kick, whatever he called it. Um, because it rarely landed. Uh, just those kicks like that. I'm Valkyria. Um. Her kick is trash too. Like then you get rid of those. Yeah. yeah didn't he do like a trouble in paradise? Yeah. Honestly, I think his trick kick is different, but in this match, he did a trouble in paradise, essentially. Yeah, because I saw it, I was like, Yeah, he's doing trouble in paradise. <laughs> Bro, I thought the same thing. I was like, that's not his normal kick. Like it like, seemed like I, rew- he I, I rewound that and looked at it again. I was like, okay, he did do that. Okay. Yeah. That was a pure, that was, I mean, it was picture perfect. I mean, it looked like Kofi did it, but, yeah. you know, it was just like, that ain't your normal kick. But, um, no, I landed. It definitely hit Dom right in his bad eye. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, no, it was really fun. The the referee, I'm not usually a love of the referee spots, but this one kind of made sense. Like, Dom's eye is messed up, so his vision is a little blurry, so he ran into the other ref. Kind of makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, that was a fun one. That was a fun one. Uh, also, you know, obviously the biggest news from it is like he won a title, right? Like he was saying, you know, Melo got his title. I want to win one for me. And he did. Um, so we'll reference back to that storyline later. Um, the next match, was it the tag match? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we have the four-way tag team um championship match we have the family versus the creed brothers versus otm and then uh angel garcia and humberto uh guerrero was it guerrero no uh corello yeah oh, yeah. yeah 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 um this was a fun one otm i don't get i still don't get i mean i get it's called out the mud but you niggas was riding tricycles to the ring yeah i'm like when i saw those bikes i yeah. was like Huh? Then y'all just scooting. Yeah, I'm like, you're you not even riding it. Y'all, y'all too big for these anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, who thought this was a good idea, bro? I'm y'all like, are too big. You put this, this Fisher Price thing on you. <laughs> like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, bro. Like, they literally got on some little ass bikes and then, like, crawled. You know, when you're on your, your kid's little bike, you can't use the wheel or the little uh, pedals, so you got to, like, crawl. That's what they was doing. It was just like they crawled like four or five feet and then got off of them again. I'm like, what? Yeah. Why? Then then get all ah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you, know, you, just, tough. you just crawled with the bike like three feet. Like, right. Okay. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I'm like you, you, you don't. That's the opposite of looking tough. And now you want to look like tough guys. Like it just that was a bad entrance. But um. But no, nah, this is a really fun match. It was really cool. The the four way suplex spot was dope. Um, I've never seen that before. Never seen that before. I was worried because I was like, because they're gonna do it like in sequence, where like one, two, three, four. I was like, how is this gonna work? But it was cool that they all did it like at an angle to where it worked. That was really smart. It was cool. 
Mm -hmm. I thought the ref was going to get hit. I was like, this ref is about to get hit. (laughs) Bro, he was standing in the middle of the room like, hey, bro, you might want to move. I'm about to say, you might need to move, like, either forward or backward. Right. Yeah, you need to get out of the ring or something. But, uh, but no, that was a dope spot. Um, and I really, I really like the family. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, I think, is starting to make it, man. Like, boy, that uh, spine burster. Oh, yeah, that was tough. Oh, was that uh, Humberto went off the ropes, went in the air. Yeah, Tony grabbed it in midair and gave him a spine buster. I was like, oh, boy, yeah. That was good. That was really good. Um, that was good. Yeah, Tony D'Angelo is like a star to me, man. He could go to Raw or SmackDown tomorrow and be fine, hang just fine out there. Um, I love Creed Brothers. That's my favorite tag team in WWE. Honestly, like them boys could wrestle anybody. Their tag team move set is ridiculous. It really is. It really is. Like after they had a little moment where uh, I f- I forgot which one it was. They did a double uh, Northern Light suplex. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. When he did that, I was like, dude, if they don't win this, like, right. you just yeah. don't do that and lose. Exactly, bro. It, I was like, it, he's it, not he's not gonna pull that. I was like, oh crap, he did. <laughs> exactly, and, man. And, and got up like he was nothing. I was like, okay, y'all, bro. And like their moves said just and that's what I like about them is like they're wrestlers. So like they're gonna give you pure stuff, they're gonna give you power. But then they give you the fun stuff, the the uh, Brutus ball or uh Brutus bomb or whatever he calls when he jumps off the oh, top. Oh, when rope. he jumps and like curls yeah. into a little ball and drops yeah. out on somebody. Yeah, like he jumping Even into though a he's pool. like way too big to do that. <laughs> exactly. Like dude is like damn near three hundred, like jumping like that and just knocking dudes out. Like that's the fun stuff. And then and then Julius, that dude's like one of the best athletes in WWE. Like that dude could do anything. So when he starts suplexing people and just start counting them, that's dope. Any anytime he like jumps off the springs boards to the top rope, then does like a flip or some sort of uh jumping move, like it's fun to watch, man. Like Cree Brothers, them dudes are stars, bro. They could again, you know, like I said, Tony Angela, Cree Brothers could go to tag team division and run that thing right now. Um Boy, yeah, they can. Um, the other two, solid. You know what I mean? They kind of need to fill spots. Um, I thought the um, Angel Garcia and uh, Umberto, I thought their moveset was kind of cool. You know what Boy, I mean? they had a few spots. I was like, yeah. I don't ever remember y'all doing that before. Where right. that come from? Right. Um, it was like real like luchador, but like, yeah, it was dope. Like It was just cool to see. You know what I mean? And it like went like you think you'd be like one or two moves, and that's it. Yeah. They did like four of them. Like, right. Oh, they're still going. Right. It was like consecutive. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was dope to see because, like, in contrast, the other three teams are like huge, big guys. You know what I mean? Strong guys. Where these these two were like the speedy ones. You know what I mean? They they showed that with their moves. So that was that was dope. Um. No, nah, but really fun tag team match. I always say this. I tweeted this. Death. Taxes and NXT giving you a great tag team match. Like that's just they do it better they than always, anybody. Any W always, yeah. like the main roster could take so much from I don't know who produces their tag team matches in NXT, but like they need to be called up because like for every NXT match, it could be on a random Tuesday, it could be any any event they do, they're gonna give you a great tag team match. It don't matter what it is. And that's good dating back to Shit, 2016, 20, you know what I mean? Like, they always gave you great tag team matches, uh, no matter what. So, um, no, nah, that was a really good one. Our next one is the, um, for the NXT Heritage Cup, we had Noam Dar versus Butch. Um, this one, I'll be honest, I don't love this, st- I don't love this, um, like, match format. I'm not in love with the Heritage Cup match format uh, doesn't work for me for some reason. So every time they do this Heritage Cup, it it's like this. Yeah, it's like, and I'll say usually someone wins the first one, but either way, yeah, it's like this where there's rounds and there's breaks in between, and there's just a lot going on, and it's just not. I don't know. I think they try to add like a a fight feel to it, but it just doesn't work to me. Yeah, that, like, 
this one missed me, honestly. Mm-hmm. Because Same. it was like it was so much stoppage, and I'm like, okay, what what counts? Exactly, yeah. I'm, like I don't know what counts, you know, necessarily. So I'm like, okay, it's tied up. All right, right. Who's about to win this? <laughs> right. It's just way too many, way too many rules, way too many factors to take into consideration. It's just like, I don't know. If they need to make that thing into, I don't know, make it into a belt or make it. I don't. Know, I kind of like it as a trophy. It's kind of differentiates it but it's also like dumb down the rules or something because it's just not it's not working only certain wrestlers can make this work and they the, t- these two did make it work to me this is the worst match on the card yeah I didn't like this one yeah. somebody I'm like like I watch NXT but I miss this whole no M Dar hanging out with black people thing <laughs> like now he got corn rolls with his straight hair and curly yeah. hair, whatever his hair is. Yeah, like like I saw this like a month ago, right? And hang around with these black folk. I'm like, okay, where these black folk come from? <laughs> right. <laughs> and like they're not like some regular old black folk either. They like flamboyant and yeah. they out there. So right. I'm like, how did this happen? Yeah, like, they call him the you know, metaphor. Um, and it's I, Noam Dar from what I've always seen. I'm not as familiar with him, but from NXT UK, like he's very like trying to be a you know culture. Like he's always trying to like add the newest thing in the culture to his gimmick or whatever. And then they had uh, Last Legend and um, I forgot what other girl's name, and then the guy from France. And like I think he was always with the dude from France. Like there was always like a partnership. And then yeah. Last Legend and the other girl kind of got added in later on. And so they called themselves the metaphor. It's kind of it's kind of been a cool little faction. It's funny. Um, but he's definitely it's, it throws you off. Yeah, it's it's funny. It just threw me off. And I'm like, right. Did, and who's who's braiding his hair? <laughs> I, I got right. I got I gotta figure that out. No, nah, homie be wearing like Gucci suits to the to the ring. Yeah. Like, he, t- he tapped in, man. I can't. Yeah, he he's fully on. And then when you hear him speak, you're like, God damn, you from over there, over there. Like you, you in the back, backwater of uh, Ireland or wherever he's from. Um, but no, nah, it's it's funny though. He's a, he's a good character. He's one of those like guys you could see getting called up and be a good character. I've never been impressed with his ring work, but he's a good character. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was probably the worst match of the night. Just I think it sucks because I think Butch. They just, just give him Pete Dunn. Just, bro, I, bro, I was watching, you know, researching for our top five. Bro, you know how many Pete Dunn matches I saw? And when he comes out with that music, bro, slaps. Like, we, if Piper is, yeah, Piper Niven, right? Yeah. yeah. If she can get her name, we can't give Pete Dunn his name back. Right. I just don't. I don't get it. He can still be like, called the Brawling Brutes. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, give the man his name back, right? Like, nobody want to be called Butch. That's a dog. <laughs> like, nobody wants that name. Like, right. why? Like, I could have take him seriously now because of his name. Same, and it, 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 that's what I was about to say. You, it's hard to take him seriously. He looks in the character they gave him. You can't take seriously. It's it's a very like off the leash dog type of character. You know what I mean? Who's just a freaking savage. And it's like, all right, Pete Dunn was amazing. Like Pete Dunn was like beat. You know, Gunther was the only person who beat him. You know what I mean? Like, dude was amazing. Yeah. Him and Tyler Bay had classic matches. So it's like, but I do think that's what's moving next. It's probably Gallus versus Tyler Bate and, um Butch, and so we'll see. Maybe they'll get added to the tag team uh, division or whatever. But all right, the next one we have the Extreme Rules match for the NXT Women's Championship. We have Tiffany Stratton versus the man Becky Lynch. No, no, go back. No, Carmella. Oh no, you're right. That was the main event. You're right. The co-main event was the men's NXT uh, Championship match. My bad. We had 
Ilya Dragunov versus Melo Hayes. Um, classic, man. Straight Boy. classic. Drawing off like makes me not like if you ever thought about hey maybe I can do that right watch one of his matches and it's gonna make you forget all of that yeah right and that's true like every hit like okay that hurts yeah bro I be it's like with Gunther like I worry about his opponents like I I be sitting there like God damn like you had to hit him in his head like that like you had to slap him in his in his head. Like, you had to kick him in his head. You had to throw a, a forearm sh- shiver, like, to his jaw. Like, we had to do that, Ilya. Like, like, like they're connecting every single time. Everything, bro. Like, and they're getting connected on every single time. Bro, when they, like, when his opponent's, like, bent over and he, like, hits him with that forearm to the back, that thing, I'd be like, oh, like I, I know that I know his opponents literally the next day just be like just in ice. Like they don't even move. They get back to gorilla and start cussing them out like for real. I told you not to do that. <laughs> You're right. No, facts. Like I'll be wondering, I'll be like, bro, did they before they go out, do they be like, All right, we have a shake hand agreement. All right, you can hit me as hard as you can, I'll hit you as hard as I can. But after that, it's a wrap. Like I don't I wonder, is there a discussion there or do they just go out there and just feed off the crowd? I don't know, but Melo's a little guy too, so bruh. They like, was throwing haymakers at each other. Just hitting. Yeah. Then you can he do hit, was it the H bomb? Yeah. Oh my God. Like that, that sucker look like that just Yeah. Oh. Bruh. One wrong it's move. No, at the wrong angle, that thing could like concussion gone. central. You like, know what I'm saying? You out for about three weeks. Yeah. To break your sternum, like it's yeah, man. But I, I thought the story was so greatly told. Like there was a story there. I'm so happy they didn't have Trick involved. I'm so happy they kept Trick away. Like because I didn't want him to come out and then do the whole same bit. And like I didn't want that. Like I just want Trick uh-huh. to I want this between be between these two. This is their, you know, their um, you know, their second match against each other. And like it was dope to see like you know, like you said, Dragunov used the H-bomb like three times, I think. Like he did it the regular way. Then he did it off the second rope. Then he had to do it off the top rope to win it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, but it just showed like, all right, he had to reach a different level to beat Melo. You know what I mean? Take that title from him. Right. Um, like, what's what's next for Melo? I know. I, I wonder. I, some, a lot of people are theorizing – and I, I don't even want to go that route, but a lot of people are saying the way he looked, like that final, you know, scene of the of the night where uh, Mello and Trick meet up together. Mello's happy for Trick, but you know, Trick is obviously sad for his boy for losing his belt. And they're saying that you know, Mello might have looked gazed at that North American title a little too long. You know what I mean? Oh no, don't. Yeah, I know. Not putting I black know. people against each other. <laughs> I know. A lot of people are like, all right, he he did say that was the A championship, and he was one of the greatest North American title holders ever. And it's like, does he switch up on his boy? Does he go back heel? You know what I mean? So it's like that. I know. I don't. I I want it, but I don't want it. I want it just because that's going to be one of the the hottest storylines out there. But then also. I don't want it because I don't want to see them, you know, beef. You know, but like if they start beefing, bro, think about it. like they're gonna have interviews in the barbershop. They're gonna be doing all kind of wild stuff. Like it's gonna be good, especially but, whoever that producer is with this black oh, yeah. stuff. <laughs> they, bro, they they know Shawn what they're doing. So Michael's got the culture, man. So Michael's tapped in. And that's so weird because people said he was racist back in the day. I know, I know. <laughs> they said he hated Dwayne. They said he hated all of them. But nah, like, he tapped in, bro. The, the NXT, the blackest show on, on TV. <laughs> oh, for all wrestling, it's a black right. Easy. Somebody <laughs> said uh, North American title for black folks. <laughs> no, I started dying laughing. <laughs> <laughs> bro, Wesley, uh, Trick. Keith Lee, uh, Mello, like Ricochet, Swerve. 
Yes, Ricochet, Swerve, Velveteen Dream. Like, like they said it oh, in show God. pictures. I was like, you know, you might be right on that. Oh, um, NXT means BET. <laughs> bro, they should do a partnership, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> they gonna be on. <laughs> oh god. Oh man. They gonna be on B- not... BET Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Watch well, exclusive episode of NXT on yeah. BT Plus. Hey, why is this? You'll see why. Yeah, but no, nah, bro. I'm telling you, like, yeah, man. That this was a classic. This was an amazing match. I, I think it was. It's hard to do, but I think it was better than their Great American Bash match. For me, yeah. Anyways, um, and yeah, like Ilya, just I mean, he deserved it. He's he's top tier. You know what I mean? It's no bigger than him. Or better than him, so I'm interested to see who his next challenges will be. But no, nah, Ilya's it's definitely his time. I kind of understand it. Um, yeah, I don't think they'll call up Melo just because it's a weird time to call somebody up. But if they did. Yeah, I mean, kill it. Up. Yeah, like, who are you gonna call him up for though? That's what I'm saying. Like, if you call him up, I don't. He'd have to go to. To me, he'd have to go to. Raw needs some help right now, I think. At least from like a I say that. Really, okay. It, Raw needs something different just to go up against Judgment Day, you know what I mean? Like Jay added a little something different to it, but they're still going up against Judgment Day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But so we all like, know where that's leading to though. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Survivor series is it's yeah, going they, down. They're they about to get in that cage. Yeah, they're about to get in that war games. The war games. Oh, yeah. and he's back too. He needs to say it. He needs to. He has know, to say it. Like I don't know if his uh, contract is up. Yeah. With AEW, why he can't be on TV? I think that was the thing, right? That I heard. But if yeah. that's up, yeah, he needs to show up. I mean, he, he has to just, say it. He has to say it. He has oh, to. he has to say it. Yeah, well, William Regal has to say it. But, um, but no, nah, like. That's obviously leading that way. Now, the only reason I do think if you did call him Melo, I think he'd be a great fit for SmackDown. He just looks like a SmackDown type of star. Like, SmackDown always seemed like, even back in the day, it was always more tapped into the culture than Raw was. Raw was like more of the Vince McMahon, company man type of guy. Wasn't Uh, SmackDown and UPN at one time? Exactly. Exactly. Like, shit, they had, you know, MVP out there doing his thing. They had Booker T doing his thing. You know what I mean? Like, they just always been more tapped in and kind of let you rock, especially and I'm happy because, bro, I think if Melo came up in the Vince McMahon era, bro, he wouldn't be able to do half the shit he does. His intros, cut. Being in the barbershop, cut. Uh, <laughs> like, all that stuff's out of there. He won't be able to do nothing. Yeah. And Vince, shit. Knowing Vince, Vince would have him in a do-rag, some baggy jeans. And a- <laughs> in, a, in, a fubu, in a fubu jersey. <laughs> He'd be like, go up there, son. Still in, right? Yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, you rap, right? He'd be like, Melo be like, no, I, I don't know. Why would I rap? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> why would I do that? Yeah, why, why do I have to be a rapper? He'd be like, no, you rap, right? Here, here's a mic. Go out there and rap. And he'd be like, go, what? Like, I've never rapped in my life. He'd be like, what are you talking about? Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad Triple H is over it. So, Triple H actually knows what happens on NXT. So, he'd be like, do you just be mellow? Just on a different stage, but um, but yeah, I am excited to see what comes out of this one. But no, nah, it was a it was a classic match. It was an outstanding. I was a little worried for for um, Tiffany and um, and Becky because I was like, "Ooh, that's a tough tough match to follow." That was yeah. That's a that's a tough one to follow. But uh, now we have the Extreme Rules match for Tiffany Stratton. And Becky Lynch, Extreme Rules for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, what was your thoughts on this? It was a great match. Like, I've seen WWE do women's Extreme Rules matches. Yeah. This one seemed different. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what exactly it was, but it seemed a little different. Yeah. And I see now why you talk about Tiffany Stratton. Yeah. Like, I think the biggest hang-up I first had with her 
Yeah, she looked like Mandy Rose. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first hang up. I was just like, why did they get this girl looking like Mandy when she was still in WWE? Right. I was like, I hope she can wrestle. Then I saw yeah. her wrestle. I was like, okay, she's not. Right, exactly. Hopefully she's not like that. Then right. after I've been seeing her like in the last month, like ever since Becky been in NXT, I'm like, yeah. okay. Then I don't know. It's a, it's a clip I've seen. I want to say on, on Twitter X, whatever it is, that they did a house show. Mm-hmm. It was them two. They were going. For real? Yes. And it was, they were everywhere around the ring. Mm. I, and it was, I want to say it was like a couple weeks ago when I saw it. Yeah. I, remember, I, I forgot to send it to you. Yeah. So I was like, they were going like back and forth and just, right. just going, move after yeah. move after move. I was like, Okay. Yeah, she's she's totally different from right. what I thought she was. Right. Then watching this match, she has a very, very, very pretty uh swanton bond. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I was like, it's like her whole body is like straight up in the air, I feel like for like three or four seconds. Yeah. Before she lands it. Right. And she has a, like a big arsenal of moves. She does. That a lot of a lot of women don't even have. Right. Or they don't even use, which right. I don't understand why they don't use it, but right. she has a whole plethora of things that she can do. Yeah. That that match was match was good. Then yeah. out then another culture thing, Becky taking a chain off of a black dude. Oh and, yeah. And beating her with the chain. Bro, I'm like, where'd I that chain that come it. from? Yeah, I missed that initially, and then somebody showed her, they showed a replay, and I was like, oh, snap, Black just handed her a chain, and she hit her with it. That was crazy. Like, goodness gracious. Then I learned <laughs> it was her, it's her designer. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah, that's the same designer who designed Seth stuff. Oh, snap. Okay. So I was just like, I'm like, who is that dude? You just right. don't give your chain up like no, that. No, yeah, that's facts. You know, regular like, black oh, dude doing that. I think your name was like King Troy or something like that. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's the designer. That's why that happened. That makes sense. He said, that makes sense. Like, she gave him that rub for, you know, yeah. outside, outside stuff. That's always, Becky always on top of that. But no, you're right, though, man. It was a classic. And like you said, like, I think the biggest thing I took from it was – because, you know, me, I like you said, I've been a Tiffany Stratton fan from the beginning. I was like, this girl's the next one. Like, she, she has every, all the tools to be one of the GOATs. You know what I mean? I'm mad, kind of mad she didn't get to show off her moonsault, uh, her most beautiful moonsault. Because I thought she was going to do it on the tables. On the, I'm sorry, on the table. I thought she was going to do it. And I thought she was going to do it maybe on the chairs, too. But she decided to do the swan time, which I didn't know she had that in her bag. So, either way, it was good. Um yeah. But I think the biggest thing I, I love that Becky is here because more fans get to watch. More fans are tuning in for Becky, so they're like, "All right, who's this other chick? Like, she looks impressive, but who? What? Who is she?" And so, so obviously, Tiffany's uh, spotlight is bigger. But my biggest thing is, like you mentioned, with the extreme rules and women's matches. My biggest frustration is sometimes I feel like women in the WWE are so like friendly that they're like hesitant to do stuff, right? Like, so they're hes- they have a, they have a kendo stick and they can take a shot at somebody, but they like hold off, let them turn around and, you know, face them with their back. And then they hit them instead of just hitting them. You know what I mean? Dudes, like if Kevin, Ove- if Kevin Owens has a kendo stick, he's going to hit you. He doesn't give a damn what angle you're at. None of that. He's going to hit you. You know what I'm saying? Same with cheer. Yeah. yeah we're not, we're not doing headshots, but we're going to hit you. You know what I'm saying? And so the cool thing about this match was there was no hesitation. Like they was throwing whatever at each other, anything. They was hitting. Yeah, like, man. Uh, with that top of that trash can lid that Tiffany hit. Yeah. Like, Tiffany hit Becky with. Yeah. Like she hit her. Yeah. Like head on. I was like, exactly. oh. Yeah. That's all that too. I was like, did she mean it? Was she trying to get the arm, the shoulder that was hurt? But like, cause she played it off with a shoulder. I was like, no. You that was a hit shot. Head. That, <laughs> that was a hit shot. shot. Was like, I don't know why you grabbed that arm, but right. you got hit in the head. Yeah, bro. That felt like <laughs> 2001. You know what I mean? Hardcore match. But nah, you're right. Like, 
Oh, but like there was there was no hesitation. Tiffany wasn't scared to do any spot. When she got up there for the table, she was ready to go. She didn't when she did the uh the Dana Brooks, you know, I mean, flip into the jumping elbow through the barricade. That was fire. Like it just seemed like she wasn't scared. Like, and that's what I saw a lot of people like, oh snap, like like they didn't know she could take it there for extreme matches. You know what I mean? They knew she was like the Barbie, the pretty girl, you know what I mean? They thought, oh, okay, she can't really step up to the plate as far as because we know Becky can do a street fight with anybody. Um, right. So just just to see Tiffany step it up even more, she impressed me. Like I'm a, I'm one of the biggest Tiffany Stratton fans out there. But she even impressed me even more with meeting the expectations of a sh- extreme rule. That was an extreme rules match. It wasn't no like dumbed down version. They really brought it. I love that Becky like paid tribute. Her her gear was it had Loki had like some Terry Funk. It had a little Bray Wyatt, you know what yeah. I mean. Um, so that was really cool to see. And um, I, I was a little irritated that Tiffany took the L, but I think there I trust Shawn Michaels essentially. So I feel like Shawn got a bigger plan, and hey, I, I'll trust him on this. I don't love to see Tiffany take two straight L's, but you know, hey, I trust you know I trust Shawn on this one. I wonder why she took that L. Same. Like, I, I was like, okay. And I was thinking in my head, like, okay, who's another woman on the roster who could legitimately challenge Becky for the title? I don't think there's anybody else who could. I think there's other people who could challenge her, but I don't think Tiffany's the only one who I legit think can beat her. You know what I mean? Interference, whatever it is. Like, um, Valkyria, I don't. I think she can give them a really good match. I think they can have a really good match. I think they wrestled against each other. I may be wrong on that, but um, but I don't think she should beat Becky. You know what I mean? I don't think she can legitimately beat Becky. And I'm like, who else on this roster? They're all the women's NXT women's roster is loaded. I just don't see anybody who can beat like Becky. You know what I'm saying? Other than Tiffany. So it was kind of like a, a catch twenty two there in my head. Like I don't, I don't know. It might be somebody that's in the performance center. That just uh, got signed. You might be right. You, hey, maybe you, you don't fire today, brother. Uh, you might be maybe. right. Maybe I just you thought about that it. when you said that. I was just like, wait a minute. It is no really nobody that can do that unless somebody pops up. Well, somebody right. just got signed at WWE. So now I will say they're they're saying now this is all rumor. They're saying that she will start on the main roster. However, who knows? Like. You starting in NXT isn't like it used to be. It used to be like, oh, you're starting down there because you're developing. Like now it's like, man, I mean, you can show up on all three shows and still be in NXT. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more in you in a more aligned, you know what I mean? More unified. So if she did show up, that'd be dope. Like I would like to see her first moment be in front of a big stadium crowd, but who knows? You know what I'm saying? It might be it no, I don't say it might be. It could be Monday. It could be because I mean Becky's you know, gonna be there. She's facing Becky's facing Tegan. That's on right. Monday. She's gonna smack her, and then yeah, I can see that. I could definitely see that. Right after she wins, boom, well, Jade's Jade's music hits. You know what I mean? That'd be fire. And I, and I can see them doing that just in case this edge stuff happens in the next few hours. Yeah, that, that kinda, would, yeah, to kind of counteract that, right? No, that would you're right because that would like, I mean, obviously, the edge would get buzz, but Cargill would get major buzz too. And against Becky, like that's getting made, that's getting ultra buzz, you know what I'm saying? Um, so now nah, you're right, you're making good points, sir. Um, that definitely could be it, so we'll definitely keep a lookout on Raw, see what happens there. Um, but yeah, um. Tiffany Stratton, she'll be fine. Obviously, like we talked about, she's walking out of this loss, like, looking 10 times better. I mean, she was already looking great, but, like, now she's, yeah. like, Tiffany Stratton. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I wonder if, like, if this is one of those, like, you take a championship L, then you're off of TV for three, four weeks. Then you come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could definitely see it being that, but we'll see. Um, we'll definitely see. Um, I wonder if Wes Lee is going to try and jump into the title picture again. I wonder if a few people are going to try to, you know what I mean, jump into the title picture as far as for Ilya. But 
She'll see. Um, That'd be interesting to see, especially his what his reign would look like. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's it's funny because like I want to see Ilya on the main roster, but him as a champion, I can't. I'm not mad at that either. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be a good one. Uh, that's gonna be a good title reign. And and he's he's like Gunther to me. Like anybody he goes against is gonna look good. You know. Um, so, you know, we'll see. One thought I have about a lot of these people being in certain title pictures. Mm -hmm. Once Roman loses this belt, this will all go away. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Because when you think about somebody losing the belt, nobody's beating Roman. Then you got to think about everybody else. Right. It's like, then it holds the people to like, you can only it beat does. somebody on Raw. It's, it does. Like Gunther, example. Gets, yeah. Yeah, then you got to – but he can be beat. Not yeah. like Roman, though. Right, that's true. But, like, once he loses that belt, whenever that – well, probably next WrestleMania, hopefully. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Then I think that will change depending on who beats him. Well, shoot, it could be anybody that beat him. Right. It'll, it'll have the chance for, like, hey, that looks realistic. Exactly. No, I agree with you. I think that'll open up the floodgates as far as like, okay, now you can start moving like regular. Whereas right now, you you got to be like, before you even think about somebody getting a title shot, you got to be like, all right, can they even realistically be in a ring with Roman? And does it even make sense? You know what I mean? Let alone challenge. Like, can they even be in the same ring with that man? Like, it's you only know? three people Yeah. right now. Seth, Gunter, and Cody. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like everybody else is like you. You look like uh, like no one's gonna watch the match because they know you're gonna get squashed for everybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I agree with that for sure. All right, now we're doing our top five favorite NXT matches. This one was tough, folks. We were talking about uh, this before we got start recording and like. We both got like more than five options. And so we're going to be going, some of these going to be off the fly, you know what I mean? Selections that how we feeling in the moment. But uh, me and L are both big time lovers of NXT. We love it. L actually was in it before I even got into it. Uh, L, when did you start watching NXT? Like 2016, 15? It was about like 20, yeah, about 2016. Okay. Around there. Yeah. Yeah. I was twenty late 2018, 2019. Um, I tapped in a little bit, but like really start watching it was like late 2018, undisputed era starting around that time. Um, but uh, Arda, I'm gonna let you do the honors. I'm gonna let you go first, number five. Ooh, number five. Boy, boy, boy. I have man. This is straight up about to be off the <laughs> off the cuff. I have Gargano and Crazy Chompa. thing. Okay. I was gonna say, you just saying our Gargano is crazy because like you could go so many different ways. But okay. I know that but the thing is they have like what three or four matches. That's what I was gonna ask you. Which one are we talking Probably about? Probably the the first one. Okay. When the, after, I think yeah. it was the first one where he ended it off with his, with his knee brace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That one, because that's when they was like, took the the mat, the, the pat, padding, padding off, off, the, yep. off the floor, and yep. they was really messing with each other. Oh, that, that, the reason I say that one, because all of that looked like they should not wrestle for the next, like, month. Right, I agree. They was they they were all in on those spots, all in. And then on top of that, it looks like okay, you have to get pinned on this. This should be yeah. three, yeah, and they kick true. out every time. Like okay, <laughs> this yeah. is crazy. Classic Gargano match. Yep, yep. Um, that's a good choice. I their rivalry produced so many good matches. I know the street fight was great. I won't go into too many more of this because you may have more on the list on your list, but. No, they had. No, I think that that's my only champion. Gargano oh, okay. and Champa. 
No, they had some great ones. I, I've watched the the Street Fight one probably the most. Um, that was a really fun one. Um, but yeah, they just the rivalry is like classic black and gold. Their rivalry. last man standing one. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, that ended a whole lot differently when I saw it live. I remember watching that. Yeah, like okay, this is, Gargano's about to win this. He got him handcuffed to part right. of the stage. Right. So it's no, okay, this is it. Like, right. until he started talking to him and try to end it, and he messed up and fell, and yep. he was on the ground and got counted one one through ten, and yes. Gargano and, and Ciampa still handcuffed, standing up. Yep. Crazy. Like, Super, that, was almost like, my, that was almost my number five instead of that one. Yeah, that was a really just because good. that ending. Yeah, that was a smart ending too. Um, definitely different than what I've seen from uh, last minute standing matches. Um, man, all right for me, number five is War Games 2019 when uh, Kevin Owens came back to NXT. Mm. That man, that pop was crazy. I want to say they were in Chicago. I want to say. But yeah, it was Tommaso. It was it was Tommaso, Dijak, and Keith Lee versus Undisputed Era. And they needed that fourth member. And they didn't have one yet. And so they were like, all right, who's who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? And then when KO's music hit, man, oh my God. Like man. you saw Adam Cole's face, it's like Yeah. Like, and he had his NXT. KO shirt on, like it was just, it was just hit so good, man. It was so perfect, and like he came in the ring, just wrecking shop, had some really cool spots, hit the stunner, uh, pop up power bombs, like, and then obviously him and Adam Cole got major history back in the day with Ring of Honor and everything, so it was just cool seeing them going against each other. But like, I just remember that pop because like that was the first War Games like I really watched, like saw the build and then watched the match. And man, it was just so good, so good. Um, and I love that. I love war game matches, anyways. But that was probably the biggest pop I've seen from a war games match. So number four. Oh boy, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> yeah, all of these are tough. I have the revival versus DIY Ooh. two out of three falls match. Yeah, take over Toronto 2016. That's a good one. That match had all kind of kickouts. Mm-hmm. I want to say revival won the first one, DIY won the second and the third. Mm-hmm. For the two out of three, so that that was just nonstop, fast pace. Both ended with them both tapping out. Yeah, yeah, that was far. I remember that finish. Right. Like, I think they were moving on to the main roster, which we don't want to talk about the revival of the main roster right now. Yeah. Was, for those that, that don't know, great... yeah, revival FTR. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was egregious. Thanks, it was. He was. That's facts. <laughs> it came up under the wrong person for sure. Wrong person for sure. Yeah. But that match was that match was fire. Yeah, it was. Definitely was. Um, especially the DIY of it all. Yeah, man. That was really good. Really good. Um ah, okay. My number four. This is a slept on match here. And this is honestly two people who are Probably canceled at this point, <laughs> but and no longer under, <laughs> no longer rest, no longer are employed by the WWE. However, I don't shy away. That don't change my mind as far as the match quality for the NXT North American title. In the uh, I think it was Takeover New York. We have Matt Riddle versus the Velveteen Dream. <laughs> yeah, man. When you both said both of them, I'm like, ooh, you're talking about both of them, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. you know what you did. 
Yep. Oh, um, boy. Classic match, bro. Amazing match. Like That was. Like, people, I get it. Level Team Dream outside of the ring, trash. Like, we get it. What have y'all done, all that. But, like, people underrate his quality, like, in the ring. Like, people were talking about, like, greatest North American champions of all time. To me, he's up there. To me, he's, like, top three. You know what I mean? Like, dude defended his on a consistent basis. He never got the NXT title. So, like, his biggest title was this one. And, like, every match he had with somebody – he had one with, I think you had Ricochet. I want to say he had one with a few others. Like I have potentially yeah. another one on my list that was a top was a top five one for me. So yeah, dude is top tier. He did have some good matches. His outfits on takeovers were crazy too. They were. His intros are crazy. That's not the one when he came out looking like Hogan, was it? No, this was the one he did the Statue of Liberty. Oh, okay. I remember that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah, man, he just honestly, one of the biggest fumbled bags of all time is Velveteen Dream. Bro, he was going to be a megastar. Dude had everything you want. He had the look, he had the, the actual wrestling ability. Um, the music slapped. Um, oh, it really did. Yeah. Do you like fire? It. Yeah. It was funky. It just it it basically for those that don't know, it was basically Prince, but who could wrestle, <laughs> like yeah. essentially. Um, and yeah, he he fumbled the bag, man, off the out of the ring issues, and um, but and this was the time when Riddle was Riddle, like this wasn't no watered down version like they got in the main roster. This was like Riddle who was doing every submission you could think of, German suplex and everybody, like he was a machine back there. Um, so yeah, that was one of my favorite matches, one on one matches of all time. Man, number three, I have Walter. This time he was Walter at this time, right? Versus Drugginoff. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I have that 20, also. 21 takeover. 36. Yep, that is also my number three. Yep. If you want people, if you want to watch people get hit, yes, you need to see that match right there. Yeah, I literally sent... Yeah, yeah, I sent a clip of this to one of my homies, because he'd be like, he'd be sending me like, wrestling is trash, and he'll send me like, you know, the dumbest things of wrestling, like somebody wrestling a toy or doing something stupid, you know what I mean? Like they do in Japan sometimes. And I sent him this. I was like, okay, now critique this. Is like this is dragging off and Walter is slapping each other in the head, elbowing each other in the head, like in the back of the head. It was wild. It was wild. Like that needs to be a match where they need to bring back WWE as a company need to bring back, hey kids, don't try this at home. No, they do. Thanks. Yeah, because that one, if you can't take people getting hit like that, don't watch that match. Yeah, that match you should. Yeah. You should watch that match. That match like makes the one with Gunther and Sheamus look very minimal. Like it makes it look very like minimal physicality, just compared to that one. Yeah, like people. Oh, they were hitting. Did you see that NXT match years ago? Right. Like they were bleeding. Yeah. Like, like no, yeah. they were hitting. Yep. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think we saw either one of them two for like a month. Yep. <laughs> I don't think. Yep. I'm pretty sure they had like a nice little break after that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was when the crowd, they wasn't even that big of a crowd. So you could hear everything. Every hit. Yeah. Like, echo. Like, because that was still during like the pandemic. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Era. Yep. Like, it was on its way out, but it wasn't there. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. That's, that match was brutal. That match was oh. top tier. Top tier. Um, What's your – that was also my number three. So, what is your number two? Number two 
of course, is Bailey versus Sasha. Nice. Take over Brooklyn. Yep. That basically put the women on the map. Literally. You can Game say changer. what you want about, oh, what about so-and-so? Nope. Yeah. They didn't do that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, like you no woman went to the number one stand of Bailey and take their little headband and just throw it away. Yep. Like you didn't you don't make a little girl cry on live TV, real mm-hmm. tears on live TV. Then as you do your finisher. Was it what's her finisher? The, it's not the it's the bank statement. Uh yeah. At the time. Yep. Yeah. Kicking the crap out of her broken hand or her yep. like surgically repaired okay. hand. Yep. And I've, did it like multiple numerous times. Numerous times. Numerous times. I watched the match today and I think they cut out the her taking the thing from the kids. <laughs> no, they probably did. Yeah, they cut that out. <laughs> like <laughs> They're gonna tell the girl, like, yeah, we'll cry about it. Like, that's boy, yeah, that's some that was top that's tier. Sasha that was, right there. That was yeah. some MJF type stuff, yeah, yeah. I was just like, dang, Sasha, you yeah. didn't care. You, you went straight for her, you know who she was, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was tough, <laughs> but that one, that was a women's matches. I, it's hard to talk that one, yeah. No, you're right about that. Um. Uh, okay, well, after after we do our top five, we'll get our, our honorable mentions just so we can point out some of our other ones. Um, okay. But number two for me, was a North American title uh, ladder match. I think it was NXT TakeOver New Orleans. And it had um, Adam Cole, Velveteen Dream, Ricochet, RC3. Um, it had like, uh, what was it? Big old ugly dude. They had oh uh, the one who got canceled. Yeah, Lars Sullivan. Yeah, Lars Sullivan. Exactly. Yep. They had him, and they had yeah. the other dude that was in the schism. Was the schism? Oh, he was in uh uh Killian Dane. Yeah, Killian Dane, who's actually really talented, uh, big guy. But um, no, nah, this is I think this is the one that Adam Cole won the first his first like. NXT title, yeah. won the North American title. Man, that was one of the best ladder matches I'd seen up to that date. And that was a spot fest. Spot fest, bro. It was so good. So good, man. And like, yeah, Adam Cole just worked perfectly with it. And again, it had big guys in it, but they worked as well. Of course, you had Ricochet, so you know what time it is with Ricochet. Um oh, man. and yeah, man, it was just I think this is the one. Velveteen comes out as Hulk Hogan. I may be wrong on that, but um, I want to say look it up. Um, but yeah, th- it was just a great match overall. It was kind of the arrival, at least in NXT, of um, Adam Cole. And yeah, it was just a great, great ladder match, man. A great one. That was a good one. Really, really good one. You see, if I, like, I didn't think like like looking at that like when I remember watching it, I didn't think mm-hmm. Adam Cole was going to win that. I didn't either. I didn't either. They did it because he was like the cool smallest thing. one out of, out of all of them. Yeah, he so was. I was like, it's no way he's about to get that. Right. I think I think it is the one who did the. I know his pants look very Hulk Hogan-ish. Yep. This, wait. No, that's wrong. The one in Chicago, number two, was the one he did Hulk Hogan. But yeah. He had some New Orleans color. That's right. Face yeah. on it. You're right. He had yep. everybody's face on that. I'm looking at it yeah. right now. He had the green, the, the, uh, who did the, oh, that was the one where off the top of the ladder, he did the elbow drop on Lars yeah. Silver. Yeah. Man, and and that's the thing about Velveteen Dream. He was so people liked him a lot because he he paid homage to older you know older wrestlers. Um, 
And a lot of his moves said, honestly, was always the older wrestler stuff. It's one of his main moves was the elbow drop, Macho Man elbow drop. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Obviously, uh, was a huge part of that match, made it successful, but obviously fumbled the bag big time. Yeah, he did. Man, he did. <laughs> uh, sorry, that was your number two? Yeah, that was my number two. My number one? Not going to hesitate with this. I can watch this match over and over and over and over again. It is Adam Cole versus Ricochet. North American title match for TakeOver Brooklyn 4. Okay. That is my all-time favorite NXT match. Hey. All-time favorite. I like that. Is that the one where... Is that the one where... Uh, Adam Cole like super kicks him while he's doing a backflip. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I watched that live. I lost my mind when he did that. <laughs> I didn't, because the camera angle, you didn't see it coming. Yeah, you did. Like, oh, he's about to, he, he's about to do this split. Bam! I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, we're here. We're here. Right. We're here. Okay. Yeah. We're not Triple H ain't playing around right now. Okay. Yep. No, nah, that's because you knew, call. like, like when that happened, you knew they did something. Yeah, that was nuts. Because you saw Adam Cole was like, oh, yeah. You just didn't, <laughs> you didn't see that, bro. Like, you see it. People do, you know, super kicks a million times a match, but you don't see them. To me, Adam Cole was the best at like doing it really well in like different ways. Like he would super kick a big guy's knee, or he kick, he super kick whatever. But to do it at a at perfect time during a backflip, you just don't see that, bro. He had like crisp, like yes, timing on that. Like you got the dude in midair with his head towards the ground in midair, yep. and you kicked him right in the head. I'm like, right in the head, right in the head. Perfect like, slap of the hip. I mean, it was, it was yeah. amazing, amazing, bro. Like, just all those spots in that match. Yeah, because it went. It was like back and forth. It was like you didn't know who was going to win that. Like, yep. like I honestly didn't think. Ricochet was going to win that. Yeah, no, you're right. That was Ricochet at the peak. Ricochet too, as far as NXT's yeah. concerned. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, that was yeah, that's that was my, that's, that's my a good all call. Time favorite. That's dope. I'm glad. I'm glad it's something different. That's dope because uh, them two had a bang of a match because it was just so it was such different styles. It was like more traditional versus the high flyer. You know what I mean? It was just. Yeah. And then those two just chemistry wise, they're amazing together. So, no, nah, that's a really good pick. Now you, now you make me want to go watch that one. <laughs> Actually, I might I just watch it go, again. Yeah, I need to go watch Brooklyn Four again. Apparently, um, because, um, but my f- number one is one that you mentioned, um, Bailey versus Sasha in NXT Brooklyn. It was just like I was watching it today, and I got like emotional low key because I was just like. Yo, this is the this is the one like you mentioned like this is the one this is the one where the crowd went just as crazy for the men for the, their match as they did the women's match or you know what I mean yeah gave them the same reaction because at that time that was rare unless it was an NXT on the main roster they never got a this is awesome ever you know what I mean uh, yeah. unless they were showing some ass or something you know what I mean something just degrading right. the women you know dumb. yeah exactly something dumb like. So this match, like, bro, it just told it. Like you said, it told a story. It, it was very much like, you know, um, Sasha like belittling Bailey, and then Bailey fighting back, and then yeah, Sasha getting a hold of that that broken hand, that surgically repaired hand, uh, getting a hold of that, putting this in the steel steps, and then kicking the steel steps. Like that was. It was oh just, my gosh! Yeah, bro. It was just. I forgot about that part. Yeah, it was just. I think the refreshing part to people is like it was a level of viciousness that you just have you don't see in women's at least during that time you didn't see it in women's matches, like women's mm-hmm. matches didn't take it that far. Where this one was like, nah, like we we blood rivals, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, the kicking of the the hand while she's doing the the crypto cross face, I forgot what she, what Sasha calls it, but like yeah, stepping on it numerous, like you said, numerous times, like hard, like not like like for real, shoot hard, and then. The all oh, the reverse hurricane rana to that right into uh, the belly, belly to belly. 
oh, I mean, you couldn't call a better finish to a match. Like that's that's going home in the right way. Like they hit yeah. that, the crowd went crazy. Then she got a right up, boom, belly to belly, boom, crowd went even crazier. And then at the end, the four horsemen walking out there, holding up the fours. Come on, man. Get you get your teary eyed, man. I'm telling you, that was an amazing, amazing match. That's still number one for me. Oh man. Yeah, man. Watch that one. I had to run that back today. I was like, that's one match I'm watching the whole thing of. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting every every minute of that album. But um, now, what are you, some of your like honorable mentions? Uh, one of them was that ladder match. Oh, okay, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, another one was where is it? Gargano versus Andrade. Oh yeah, that was a banger. That was a that banger. went for about thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, bro. That was amazing. That was like Andrade at his peak. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that was, yeah. Someone was like, oh, I don't remember that match. So I watched the back. I was like, dang, this is a long match. Like, dang, we gave <laughs> some time for this. Yeah, yeah. That was a really good one. Um, you got any other ones? What did, what you, I got uh, this one. I had to like look back. I remember seeing clips of it and people mm-hmm. always talk about this match was uh Shinsuke versus Sami Zayn. Uh that one I didn't get to watch fully again. I need to rewatch that one because I heard like you said, I have heard great things about it. Like I I went back and watched it. I can see why people say that. Because that was yeah. back when Shinsuke was still still Shinsuke. Still, yeah. Still Shinsuke, but a little bit still had that new Japan in them a little gotcha. bit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I need to watch that, especially since I didn't get to see that that level of Shinsuke over in Japan. So, um, but no, I need to I need to watch that. You had the all red pants. You knew you had the red pants. It was a wrap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um some of my uh, honorable mentions are uh, Walter versus Pete Dunne. And uh, take over in why that was when uh, Walter won the NXT UK title, um, yeah. and and ended Pete Dunne's streak. Another one is Imperium versus Undisputed Era 2020 Worlds Collide. Um, I love Worlds Collide, by the way. If you have, if you ever Worlds Collide, got so many bangers of matches, it's crazy. Um, they really did. Um, another one is Keith Lee versus uh, Dijak for the North American title. I want to say I forgot which takeover it is. But um, banger matches like those two like kind of like a good one changed the game as far as big men you know what I mean doing acrobatic things and doing different stuff um and then yeah my last one we kind of talked about it before we were recording but it is Mustache Mountain versus Undisputed Era tag team match NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four so obviously I need to watch. <laughs> take over Brooklyn Four because that was also the one you mentioned is also on there with uh, Ricochet and, and uh, Adam Cole. So I need to check that one out. But yeah, yeah. Because when I'm thinking, like, man, a lot. I got, I got to look at that card. Yeah, I got to rewatch that one. I actually got it up, uh, Paul. Now, so yeah, I'm gonna go check that one out because. I knew I loved the Mustache Mountain Undisputed Era one, and I know I've seen that Adam Cole match, uh, Ricochet match. I just no, I haven't seen it in a while. But uh, no, nah, that it was cooking that that one for sure. Um, but that is it, folks. L, I appreciate you once again, sir, uh, hopping on with me, and uh, you know you're my NXT expert. You know, what I mean, you was tapped in before I was, so. Uh, I always appreciate you stopping through. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. When that when I get that text message, I know what time it is. <laughs> exactly. You know, lock in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Until next time, folks. Appreciate you again. Hit us up on the Facebook. Uh, we on Instagram as well. The uh, League of Melanated Gentlemen Pod or the LMG Podcast, whichever. Um, hit us up. Same thing on Twitter as well. 
And uh, yeah, hit us up. If you guys have any top five NXT matches you you have in your head that we didn't maybe mention, hit me up. We can discuss it. Or if any thoughts on the NXT, you know, Mercy or any maybe the fallout of Wrestle Dream or uh, things of that nature. Definitely hit us up. But until then, we out. Yeah.